Hey traders, this is Ron Haid. Happy Sunday. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. As always, everything in this presentation is for educational purposes only. We'll kick off here with the Q's daily chart using Thinkorswim. Happy days are here again. There are no worries. The markets are going to new all-time highs, at least in the case of the Q's. Everything is wonderful, it seems. Yeah, but there's going to be a dose of reality coming in here. And the damage that's been done to the economy due to locking down over a virus, there will be there will be a price to pay. Now you might say, well, holy macro, look, look at how it's already performed. The reason, there's more buyers and sellers. But what I would want to watch for, regardless of opinion, thought, you know, as crazy as this may seem, if you look at this chart, there's a 20 day EMA, which is the red line. And I tell you guys about this all the time. It's a wonderful trend indicator. Ever since the Qs regained it and broke out over a previous little swing high right here. Remember, this is a daily chart. Here was the carnage. We came back up. We did get above the 20 day, back and forth. We dipped. This was the last fake out before a straight up rally. Can you believe that? They they gapped it lower, looked like we we're gonna roll over, immediately pushed higher. When you have that kind of powerful reversal over the previous highs, that's telling that, hey, it looks like the bulls might be coming in here. So what I like to do is use that red line as a trailing stop. Who knew we were gonna go to new all-time highs, right? I don't think anybody really thought that, but look at the red line. We've touched it, what, once? Got close a couple times. So the moment we close below that red line will be the first sign that maybe the dam is starting to crack um, on the cues. Right now, I did get a question about the eight-day moving average. I pulled it off these charts. Given the way we're moving right now, I think the red line is the one we want to focus on. I'll bring the eight-day back in in another video. So I'm not watching the eight-day right now, just the red line, the 20-day for a trend change. Let's take a look at the S&P. Gap tire closed at the upper end of the day. Um, let me zoom out back out here. Look where we are. We're back in the neighborhood of where we were at the end of January and then right when the carnage began. That's pretty incredible. What would I watch for here? The red line. Now we did close below it back on May 13th, but that's it. One day did we actually close below since the S&P did the same as the NASDAQ. Let's zoom in here. There was the low, 23rd. We run into the 20 day, we roll over, not looking good. But then a couple days later, we thrust right back up above the 20 day, take out the previous high. This is a sign that, hey, now we're getting higher highs, we're getting higher lows. I would immediately go to a 20 day EMA. Would have been stopped out just one time, then you're right back in and just look at that. I mean, this is incredible. That close on April 6th, it was a 264. We're at 319. That's over 500. $50 on, on the SPY, 500 S&P points, literally with only a one-day stop out. If you go back to the queues, it's nuts. We closed, what, um, 196, now you're at 240. That's over 50 points in the queues using the red line. And here is the Dow. Again, there's the low on the 23rd. We ran right up into the 20-day EMA in red. We then get the gap down, but then we get a gap up. It actually creates an island reversal type pattern also taking out the previous highs. Then we go to the red line. If I zoom in here, we sort of closed on below, depending how you want to look at it right there. We did get a one day shake out here, but the 50 day caught us and then right back up. And then here we go. You know, this is incredible as well. So right now, the sky's the limit on the Qs. The Dow and the S&P, you would go to the all-time highs. That is the big target because now we've even taken out the little, after we had this down move, we had that pop. We've even closed... Actually, that close was what? 270.89. Yeah, we closed above it. So the all-time highs, <laughs> as crazy as that sounds, is, is the target. All right, let's take a look at the VIX here really quickly. The VIX is going to be low because the markets are rallying. We're back down to 24. Um, I did get a question on um, Apple as well. Apple, new all-time highs. It too, once we regained that 20 day, there's only been one day where it closed just a few pennies below it, and then we got right back above it. And then we even took out the orange, which is the 50 day. And then it's just been straight up. It's incredible, but you know, there's going to be, and I don't want to get into it here. We'll keep this video on the short side, but you don't get to shut down the economy over a virus. Two thirds of the workforce is service oriented. They don't have jobs. And now the idea that they're going to do every other table, how much longer can some of these restaurants hold on? 
the waiters and the waitresses. How much can they take half in tips? You know, they, they just can't do this stuff without it, without thinking about the economy and then taxes are going to go up. So right now, because, excuse me, let me finish my thought there. Taxes are going to go up. They already have in my area because they're missing the revenue from people not working. It's sort of like, duh, do you guys not understand economics? <laughs> so now that people don't have money and the taxes are going to go up. Oh yeah. You know, that free check from the government's really going to help. But my, that, way, that might sound like, well, that should be really bad. The market should go lower. It's not. That's why the trend is your friend. Why I love using the 20 day EMA. And when we get below it, Hey, maybe then it's time to pay the piper. So as, as uh, crazy as this market is, it's still been very, very easy to trade from the long side. It's been, it's not supposed to be this easy where it just goes down and then it just goes straight up. There, there should be a little more of a hiccup in between. It is nuts. How about Google? We are not at all time highs yet. The 1530s up there, but look at the red line. Same thing. We sort of got a couple, maybe pennies below it here. We tested it here. It's been straight up. So keep watching that red line. Um, Amazon sitting up there. This is one gigantic bull flag, but look at the lows, higher lows, ever so slightly higher highs. This thing looks fine too. The next earnings season is going to be in the middle of July. And maybe then we get to see how some of these companies are performing because, you know, I, I titled one of the videos back in April, grab the popcorn because that earnings season was going to be arguably epic. Well, maybe this is the one where as they open up stores, and different things are like, oh, people are going out. Yeah, but they're not going to go out in the same count in the same quantity as what they were because the restaurants, for example, they just can't deal with it. If they're doing this six foot rule for everything, how can they have tables open? Right. And we're already seeing it in Vegas. They were talking about crowds coming in and things, but two people at a blackjack table, three or four people at a roulette table, it's they're not going to pay their bills that way. You know, their rents aren't dropping by half, et cetera. So here's Facebook. This is just consolidation. We're still above the red line. We break below the red line. That would be a sign of trouble. But if I show you all the data on Facebook, you know, we're at all time highs. We've been at all time highs on Facebook now for about two weeks. All right. How about Starbucks? Just do some different stocks here. Right at the 200 day. That's a natural target. We're there. We are almost back to the prices before the carnage began. And that earnings report from the end of January, pretty crazy. Again, watch the red line, first sign of trouble. Notice how the 50-day acted as support here. That 50-day in orange is an institutional moving average. That's the big boy. We get below that one, that would be a, a much bigger deal. The red line, first sign of trouble. The orange, it's game over for the bulls on the daily chart. Because this actually also creates a bit of a double bottom. So below the orange, the target would go right in here to these lows. We break that, target's back down here. As of right now, it's still bullish. How about McDonald's? Above the 200 day on Friday, target, the highs up there. How about even something like John Deere? As if, you know, businesses are going to, and farmers are going to go out and buy new equipment if they don't know, you know, what, what it's going to look like in terms of the economy. This to me seems a bit ridiculous as well, but you know what? It is what it is. You just go with the flow and you don't fight it. First sign of trouble. Uh, and we did have a gap up. If we were actually to get a gap down, that would also be a reversal pattern. But Deere's chart here is a little more convoluted, if you will, with the 200 day, the 20 and the 50, some of these others like the tech stuff, so easy to spot. First sign of trouble back below the 200 day. And then every moving average that falls just gets more bearish. Did you guys see some of these airlines on Friday? Here's American. You know, the stock was sitting around 11 bucks and change, you know, like Wednesday. And then it doubles 100% rally to the peak on Friday. And then you finish here at 18 because it's like they said some folks are starting to fly more. Likely that was going to happen, but enough to justify that kind of price when the highs were up here, when all these planes are sitting? Yeah, probably not. How about Delta? Look what happened when it got above the 50-day. Now, it broke the 50-day in orange more by time, not necessarily price. But we did see some volume starting to kick up here, pulls right back down to the 50-day, and then it just starts to become a launch pad. This one went right back up. No, it actually didn't. I was going to say it got close to that gap. This is very bullish, but I would not want to chase these things right now. The, they all remain in a state of turmoil because you have to think what they've done to this economy. You know, they put out all these stats and now they're all wrong. Oh, but they're going to keep the economy locked up. At some point, they got to admit they're wrong and say it was never as bad as we said it would be. Even on the death rate, it's, a, it's, it's not even a fraction. It's insanely off of what they originally posted. And that's on the CDC's own numbers. 
But think about this. If they try to repeat what they did now over the winter, I can't imagine what our economy is going to look like at that point. So I think these stocks are just rallying on the idea of the markets are opening, but it's sort of like sell the news. I wonder with stocks coming off their highs, not just American Delta, but you look at something like the banks, XLF, is this a sell the news event? And literally we just saw the high and now we're going to start pushing back maybe lower. We'll have to see, but you know what to watch for. Watch that 20 day EMA in red. And uh, so X, by the way, here's XLF, the banking ETF. Banking ETF hit the 200 day in purple, big institutional line. Um, if it gets above there, all time, well, the highs, would that be all time highs on the banking? I imagine it probably would be. Yes, it would be. It would be the all time highs, would be the target at that point on the daily chart. All right, and last but not least, let's just do JP Morgan. And we'll take a quick peek at gold too. Here's JP Morgan, same thing. Tagged the 200 days, sold off the highs. Maybe we're going to see some profit taking. You know, you look at something like Darden. They were off their highs too. Now Darden is still bullish, but if it loses the red line, then you know get ready. There could be something developing. And last but not least, we'll look at gold. It did lose the 50-day moving average in orange. Last time it did that was on the last day of March, and that turned out to be a one-day fake out, and then back up we went. But that was when the markets were in a lot of turmoil. This type of event occurring does put me on notice. If I was bullish on gold, I would be now at this stage more cautious. And where did we close? 158.01. We took out these lows on a closing basis. Technically, this is starting to look like a breakdown. I would say one more down day tomorrow, then we would target the 200 day in purple. That's it. Wish you guys a fantastic week. Bulls are partying like there's, it's never going to end, but you now know what to watch, whether it's the spiders, diamonds, or whoever it might be. Watch that red line for the first sign of trouble. Take good care, folks. See you in the next video.